Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to the new episode of our interview series, which will definitely be enjoyed by any fan of dark and heavy music. Our today's guest, John Davis of the doom metal band Conan, will be speaking about the band's upcoming live album, share some details about the new studio album and when it most likely will be out, uh, share some of his craziest touring stories and much, much more. Yet before we start, and especially if you're new to the channel, I'd like to take a moment and ask you to support Metal Pilgrim by liking, commenting, sharing this video, and of course subscribing to Metal Pilgrim on YouTube or any other social media you actually hang out at to be able to submit your questions for all future interview guests. Be among the very first ones to find out what is inside the latest rock and metal releases and for more exclusive content. Here you go. How's it going? Yeah, really good, thanks. How are you? Ah, all is well, all is well. We finally got some snow this year, so it looks like a proper winter for us. <laughs> ah, yeah, we've just, we've just started to warm up a little tiny bit now the last few days. Mm -hmm. That's good, good to hear. Got some really cold weather, so it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't much fun. Yeah, yeah, man. Nice background. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just in that, my, the Hubble Space Telescope right now. <laughs> Fun, man. Uh, how are things in the UK? I mean, uh, we hear your vaccination campaign is doing well. I mean, how, how are you personally coping with all this madness? Yeah, okay. No, no, no problem. I'm kind of used to it now, like most people, I guess. <laughs> um, excited for when things will return to normal. Yeah. Like, again, like most people. But, um, yeah, personally personally doing all right that's good good Got a few things which i'm working on i like to keep busy so it hasn't affected me in that way but obviously not being able to tour is uh, a huge problem but we'll get there eventually yeah absolutely hopefully sooner than later you and all the other bands because i mean yeah uh, I think people are getting very, very tired of this, obviously. Man, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I'm sure you're busy because you guys are set to release a new live album uh, live at Freak Valley on March 12th uh, via Napalm Records. Uh, so can you take us back in time for just a little bit and let us reminisce on those times when you, people could actually go to live concerts and remember what was it like to play at that festival? Uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was an early morning flight into, I think, either Hamburg or Cologne, I don't remember now. Mm -hmm. And then we were picked up by a driver and uh, we had like a uh, an assistant there who gave us ice cold Jägermeister, which is really nice. <laughs> and it was really interesting to drink that at that early morning. <laughs> and we got to the festival and uh, everyone greeted us at the entrance and got all our stuff together. And then obviously when, when we got to play the show, it was it was awesome. We're very lucky that we've we've played like festivals all over the world actually and uh i'd put that up there as being one of the best festivals we played it's just like it's a really awesome setting a really nice atmosphere and uh, i still talk to the organizer now jens you know he's um he's a facebook friend and uh we'd love to play it again one day if if, uh, if it was at all possible yeah god loves and uh you know, from the videos you guys released, the, it looks like the atmosphere and the crowd has been just crazy and absolutely amazing back then. And it's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 the, the crowd, the crowds will vary. Uh, usually at a festival, it's normally quite sedate mm -hmm. and people don't tend to go too crazy to us. Um, sometimes our sound doesn't translate all that well to the, to the big stage. But on, on that day, everything seemed to click together. Yeah, and it, it felt like a it felt like you know a really good show. The crowd seemed to really enjoy it and uh, enjoyed. Uh, they were uh, going going a bit crazy in the, in the mosh pit and stuff. So it was awesome. I Absolutely. have some really good memories of it. Absolutely, man. And uh, how do you usually go about you know developing a set list for a show like this, especially when you know that it's going to be recorded? Um. Well, we we've. Over the year, over over, you know the 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 number of years we've settled on a set list, mm -hmm. and we like to have a, a, a like an ebb and a flow. We'll switch songs out from time to time. Obviously, we don't we haven't been playing the same set for that length of time, but we it kind of evolves over time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like putting certain songs in the set list because you know 
um, it's going to sort of elicit a certain sort of mood. Mm -hmm. But we don't... Uh, we don't normally change it for any specific show. Mm -hmm. Normally, we just have a feeling where we want to switch things around. And um, I don't remember exactly the set that we had on that day, but it seemed to go down well. Yeah, it is. Uh, and do you personally have a favorite track to play live? Um, we've not played it for a little while, but Earth and God is one of my favorite songs to play live. That was off the album uh, Revengeance. Mm-hmm which came out in 2016, and uh, that uh, has got, like, uh, I get to play, like, sort of, like, some, some lead guitar on there, which I don't normally do in, in our music. So it's it's kind of different to our other slow songs because it's got a bit more melody to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, again, we've not played it for a little while, so I think we'll have to add that to the set for next time around. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, man. And since its formation, Conan has kind of been associated with you personally, right? Being its frontman and band's leader, obviously. How much input do you actually take from others when it comes to, you know, writing music or important decisions about the band? Um, I, do, I take input. Yeah, of course I do. I mean, mate, on, on, the, on the business side of things, you know, um, things like, uh, are we going to do this tour or not? Mm -hmm. Or you know what label should we go with? They're all they they are all group decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, don't write all the music on my own. Absolutely not. Um, for right now, Johnny and I are sharing some demos online mm -hmm. with Chris, and we're writing sort of remotely at the moment. Johnny lives over in Dublin in Ireland, so he can't fly over here at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we. Um, we're, we're, we're working remotely and all three of us are involved in that process. You know, we'll all critically analyze the ideas that we've, that we've got sort of in the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got what, two albums worth of demos at the moment. So it's been really, it's been a really productive period, this lockdown that we're in. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like, I like to, if you use the analogy of a ship, you know, we've got like, we've got a few different captains mm -hmm. and uh, we're not like, there isn't just one commander. Mm -hmm. We all have an input. Wow, it's great that you guys are currently working on new material. So when can we expect, you know, some of it to be out? Um, that's a difficult question at the moment. We're looking to record it in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, it's likely that we, uh, we might have to put that back a little bit because Johnny isn't yet able to fly over here. Unfortunately, yeah. So we can't rehearse in person yet, which we really do want to do before we mm -hmm. record. Um, and of course, that has a knock-on effect of us not being able to say for sure when we'll release it. I wouldn't want to release it under the current circumstances because when you can't tour to support an album release, it definitely... It definitely impacts upon the success of the album, mm -hmm. um, and we don't really want to have that problem. We'd rather we'd rather wait until things start to return to normal, mm -hmm. and then we will uh, hopefully get to release it shortly after that. Yeah. And in terms of the new materials, music, do you think it's shaping in you know in the way that Conan is known to its fans worldwide at the moment, or you guys are you know trying to explore new horizons? Um, we don't normally we don't normally think we don't give it too much thought to be honest with you. Um, so the, the albums have evolved from mm -hmm. you know all the way back from Horse Fat Battle Hammer right through to Existential Boy Guardian. They, the songs have evolved and changed, but that hasn't really been a deliberate thing. They've just they've just changed naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we'll just continue to, to work in that way. You know, it's, it, if, I, if I sat down and said, oh, let's try and write a song that sounds a bit like this, I don't think it would work. And I don't think I'd enjoy it. Mm -hmm. so we, we just kind of go with the flow, really. Yeah. We, we do what we're good at and sort of like we don't try and get too clever with it. Nice. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, musical influences, who are you know the the bands that influence you personally the most? Um, 
Slomatics, High and Fire, Black Cobra, Godflesh, mm -hmm. Nail Bomb, Sepultura, Nirvana, maybe Forge Tunnel. Uh, little bits of Sun. I like. I, I, I like mm -hmm. elements of Sun. The way you, they use feedback and sort of like tension in the music, without it being all about a riff. I uh, I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, elements of the Melvins. Um, Gonga are another really important band. They're a band that have, they're from Bristol. They're a band that perhaps most people wouldn't really know about too much. But I remember really when I was learning to play sort of heavier styles of music and I discovered them on Radio 1 mm -hmm. and they had, they had like a live session on Radio 1 and I wrote to them. And then... Um, I've been friends with them, you know, for a little while now. That George, the guitarist, um, they are um, they're a, a great sort of like what you know. People talk about stoner metal, and really, they don't. It doesn't really fit with a lot of those bands. But with 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 Gonga, particularly the the first self titled album, that was where I discovered them. Mm -hmm. They got they got this this sound which is really really unique. Uh, but yeah, that, there's a short That's list of the bands that... It just made I a great promo. I'll have to go and check them out. <laughs> Especially yeah. the, new, the first album. Uh, yeah. And in terms of the lineup, Conan, you know, has been changing, you know, its lineup several times, right, throughout the years. Do you personally think that your current one is the strongest one you've ever got? Um, strong, yes, yeah. I do. It's the most stable. Okay. Because the, if you if you if you you know Chris and Johnny have been in the band now longer than any other bass player or drummer have been in the band, and um, yeah, we, we we've changed members along the way. But don't forget, we're we're living in an era now where music doesn't pay that much. So unfortunately, especially now with yeah. COVID, it pays nothing. <laughs> it pays, yeah, it pays literally nothing right now, but. To, I think in the past, a lot of the tensions have been to do with money, like people maybe expecting more money than they were getting, or mm -hmm. like I wanted us to tour, and I really wanted us to put in the hard work of touring, even when the, even when those shows didn't pay very much, mm -hmm. because I saw the, the, the long, you know, the, the, the long view of that. Yeah. And um, I think some, some, sometimes members have left, but we've had less member changes than... Black Flag, and they 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 had nearly fourteen changes of members during their lifetime, and um, we're probably about half that at the moment. So I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> you still have some room to go. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Uh, John, we have several fan questions uh, which were upvoted quite a lot. So if you don't mind answering some of those, man, and it's deviating from from the theme of the live album uh, just a bit. Sure. Um, Will there uh, be any represses of your older material, especially Blood Eagle in particular? Do you have any uh, idea? Um, there's nothing planned at the moment, but the label, um, it's, the label may potentially re uh, repress it. I know that I repressed, uh, I, I pressed some picture discs mm -hmm. of that album on my own label, Black Bow Records, uh, and I think they're pretty much sold out now. Um, I would, yeah, no plans right now, mm -hmm. but the, the, the music that we have was, uh, was licensed to Napalm Records. I think each, each license was for 15 years. So I think in 2031, mm -hmm. no, 2029, I'll get the rights back to, uh, -huh. uh Blood Eagle. So if it hasn't been repressed, I'll repress it then. Yeah. So hopefully if, 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 if the person who wrote that question is still alive, in 2029 they can buy a copy of it yeah but uh who knows actually napalm has been amazing about repressing some of the you know older uh albums with a variety yeah, of bands yeah. and they do some pretty good job on vinyls i have several ones in my yeah. discography here <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're a great label yeah absolutely man and uh you know there is one track on a previous album, especially, that stands out in a way. I think you know which one I'm talking about. But what was the impetus for writing a track like Pain Contration, right? I mean, 
can we expect something like this in the future where you deviated from you know the formula the known conan kind of style and explored sort of new horizons of fast and short you know uh songs yeah that that song actually what you hear on the album is the first take of that song mm -hmm. in the studio <laughs> so all the others all the other stuff we rehearsed a little while and recorded it sort of um in stages but that 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 particular song uh johnny and i just just played it together while chris hit record mm -hmm. and uh and then obviously chris recorded his bass over the top of it of course but um yeah we, we just did that in one take we we probably will write some more stuff like that because it's so much fun to play it live and it does take people by surprise it's true um <laughs> We played the Black Label Society uh, and we, uh, last year, uh, 2019, sorry, yeah. and we played a show in Hampton Beach, which is uh, in New York State, yeah. and quite a, quite a posh, like nice, uh, high-profile venue. And uh, we played, and we ended with that song. And uh, apparently, there was a, a, a child was crying in the crowd because he didn't know what was going on. So that was kind of that was like I felt really bad for him, but yeah. now I'm sure he got over it. It was kind of funny hopefully um yeah everything else is kind of sort of mid-paced heavy metal yeah we dedicated that song to dying back daryl when we played in dallas on that same tour and the, the, the there must have been like two thousand people in the venue mm -hmm. and it, they went insane mm -hmm. so yeah we'll do something like that again for sure we just have to make it sound natural absolutely thanks man and um is there one band that you personally would absolutely love to play on stage with and you think that Conan would sound amazing with that you haven't played yet? Um, Fudge Tunnel. What? Fudge Tunnel. Fudge Tunnel. Oh, okay. They, Fudge Tunnel, yeah. For me, they're, 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 they don't play anymore. Mm -hmm. Their bass player actually plays in Conan sometimes mm -hmm. when we need a uh, stand-in. But they were like they were a metal band from the early nineties, mm -hmm. and that's when they came to prominence. They were on Earaid Records for a while, and they toured with Sepultura. Sort of like noisy, sort of heavy metal, heavy rock. Uh -huh. um, they don't really fit into your stereotypical metal band. They're not a grunge band. They're not a punk band. They're sort of a, a bit of everything. They're they're awesome. So nice, nice. That'll if I was nice. able to play nice. one show, I think I'd say them. Yeah, that, that's nice, man. Thanks. And um, didn't at some point you guys said that you were developing a mobile game? What? Uh, what yes. It? Yeah, what happened to it? And uh... Well, that's on ice at the moment because I was uh, developing it in cooperation with a, a game developer from um, overseas. And the version that he, that he sent to me was awful. <laughs> so, and I put quite a lot of money into it. Oh. So it didn't didn't really work out. So it's on ice right now. The idea is still there, but yeah, right now I don't think we're going to take it any further. All right, man. All right, thanks. Uh, I don't want to keep you here too long. So just a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Um, Never problem at all. Uh, what is your one guilty pleasure in terms of music? What do you blast when no one is listening? You know, something weird like Selena Gomez or I don't know Justin uh, Bieber. I really like. Like 80s synth pop music mm -hmm. so like erasure or the communards or pet shop boys that sort of thing i and that reminds me of being a child and that was that was what you would that would that was like the music of the time um so I, i'd probably say that was the that that was the thing but everyone knows that that's cool music <laughs> and it all go, it comes around in circles as well I really like it. Yeah, everyone can pretend that they don't like uh, pop music, and you know, until Pet Shop Boys starts playing, and then everyone's dancing. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if if it's on and they've had a few drinks, that's true. No way yeah. well, I'm gonna get and up and everyone dance sings along, music. right? I mean, don't don't pretend like yeah. you don't. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. And can you share with us just one craziest touring story from your career? Something or just one show that got stuck in your head, you know, the memory that you cherish. Um, we played, uh, we played uh, in, I was just talking to my friend about this just uh, earlier. We played uh, a few shows in Japan mm -hmm. in 2018. And uh, we, uh, we played in Osaka, Nagoya mm -hmm. and uh, 
um, Tokyo. Yep. And the, the, I remember the show in Tokyo because we played this legendary venue in the Korean district called um, Earth Dom. Mm -hmm. And that venue is uh, famous in the Japanese heavy music underground. Mm -hmm. And it hadn't been sold out for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. But um, we were on a small tour over there with a, a, a band, <clears throat> excuse me, from Sheffield <clears throat> called Kurakuma. Mm -hmm. And um, they arranged this run of shows with us. And the, 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 the show sold out. And it was, uh, it was crazy because we didn't have any sleep before the show. We had to drive overnight from Osaka. And... So we were extremely tired. We watched a movie before the show in the venue, the, this documentary about doom metal that our friends in Kurakuma made. And then we played this, we played the show, and it was like, uh, you've seen the movie World War Z with Brad Pitt? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. No. no. It's a zombie movie, <laughs> and the CGI scenes are like the zombies just coming at you over yeah. and over and yeah. over. And it was, it was like... A, a bit like that, but it was like fans, just a crowd surfing, but over and over and <laughs> over again, all the way through the show, and it was the most enjoyable show I've ever played. Nice. So I hope we hope we can do that again. Nice, nice man. Well, I just you know remembering those shows makes me you know want to go to a real concert, not an online event, but a real concert. Grab a beer uh, with with a stranger yeah. nearby and uh, enjoy. Enjoy real live music. I hope that you guys will make it to Kiev because I'm from Ukraine myself. Uh, oh, sometime. cool! Yeah, we played. We've we've not played in Ukraine. We've been as far as Russia, yeah. and we have spoken about playing in Ukraine. Well, you should. So we, we we would love to. Yeah, those two countries are very different, and uh, would love to welcome you here. I'd love to show you around, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Be great. Perfect, uh, John. Thank you so much for your time. Any last message for the fans? Anything you want to share with them? Uh, well, thank you um, to anyone who's listening, who, who's a fan of ours, and thanks for your support, mm -hmm. and thanks for talking to me. Absolutely, John, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Just as a reminder, uh, Conan's live album, Live at Freak Valley, is out on uh, March 12th via Napalm Records. Make you, sure you check it out. I was able to listen to it, and I enjoyed it a lot, uh, to be honest with you. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great one. It's a great live album that really captures the essence of the band, I feel like, you know, and uh, some of the tracks, I'll be honest with you, to me personally, sounded even better than they uh, did on a, on a studio version. So, yeah, so we rehearsed them over and over by, by then, so that's good. Yeah, that's true, man. All right, thank you so much, man. Keep rocking. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, thanks.